Hey everybody, it's Chase with AV Pop Culture again, and today I am here to continue spooky season content with a first look review at the new 2024 Salem's Lot that just dropped on HBO Max, dropping today. So pop that tape in, I got you, let's go do this. All right, so this is going to be as spoiler free a review as possible. I don't think I'm going to have like anything that you couldn't know from having seen the original or from seeing the trailer for this new movie. But uh, first, I want to apologize to all you followers, uh, my subscribers. I love you guys all. Um, I've just been kind of having one thing after the other. My computer with all the power surges, the power repairs they're doing around here. Yesterday blew out some hard drives. It took me about nine hours to get my computer back on. Um, I've still lost a lot of footage. I lost several recorded videos that I had for you guys that I need to redo. Um, and a lot of editing work. So I'm going to try to get stuff out here as much as I can. Uh, this does, YouTube does help me actually like pay for some of these repairs, like every dollar that I can make from YouTube, from you guys watching, subscribing, all that kind of stuff helps me. So I, you know, it's, I need to get the videos out too. Uh, you know, not only is this my huge outlet, but, uh, it does help dig out from a lot of these, uh, repairs and stuff that we've had here lately. Every dollar helps. I'm sure you guys understand that kind of thing, but enough of all that. Uh, I got my mind off of everything and watched Salem's Lot. Now, I'm a big fan of the original series here. Um, it had some problems, too, because I am a massive fan of the book. I've not only read the book several times, I've listened to it on Audible multiple times, like while doing cardio and stuff. If you get a chance to listen to Stephen King books on Audible, I highly, highly, highly recommend uh, doing that. Um, they all have really good performances and, um, this movie, like, I mean, I had a lot of high hopes, but you start to get worried because it gets pushed back. Uh, the release keeps getting pushed back. It goes from, we're going to have this big theatrical release to, uh, well now we're just going to dump it on streaming. The date for that keeps changing. Uh, so you get a lot of worry. You're like, oh shit, is it that bad that that's what they're doing? Well, I enjoyed it. Um, it has some negatives and we'll talk about those, uh, but it has a lot of positives. So for me, this book in this movie, the original series, of course, done by Toby Hooper of the Stephen King book, um, back in the late seventies, this has everything for me. Uh, I, you guys know that I love that creepy small town vibe where you take like an idyllic, um, old school, small town and there's something creepy just underlying. There's like a mystery and this atmosphere that overtakes you. Salem's lot has that. Uh, and this new movie has that in spades. Uh, you know, there's always something with the original miniseries. It almost kind of goes on too long. It almost is too faithful to the book. And the new uh, adaptation, there was another one in there too with Rob Lowe. We're not talking about that one right now. This newest adaptation takes the other side of that and maybe leaves too much out and goes too fast. It just feels a little bit rushed. But we're going to start with the positives here. That atmosphere, that creepy small town atmosphere is there big time. Love it. You know the story. So you are, if you know the story at all, you're already kind of feeling it going in. And uh, what it, you know, Ben Mears, he is from, it, the town is actually Jerusalem's lot. The sign is like messed up, rotten, uh, obscured, and they end up calling it Salem's lot. And it's kind of like a derogatory nickname. In the book, it's referred to as the lot all the time, like this place they just can't get out of. It almost feels like it's stuck in another, like a parallel dimension, which is brought up later in the Stephen King uh, series of books, The Dark Tower. 
that it kind of is like at this spot, this in a thin spot between dimensions. It starts out with writer Ben Mears, who's from uh, Salem's Lot. He's coming back to town to write a new book, to get inspiration and everything else. He gets there and, um, you know, things are that that eerie. They seem great on the surface, but then there's that that eerie small town vibe and the new uh, antique store owner. Uh, who ends up being the head vampire, Count Barlow. I'm not breaking any new ground by saying this. Um, they move into the obviously haunted house, like the house in town that's like, if if a vampire and ghosts were going to live anywhere, it's obviously this house. Um, so they move into this house, and he starts to infect the town with uh, vampirism. Like, uh, everybody starts to become vampires. And it's still set. They keep the new one still set in the late 70s. And they do a pretty good job with that aesthetic because I I like it. It feels like an old school 80s, 70s horror movie. I love setting movies then because you get rid of all the modern technology bullshit. Like the, just pick up your cell phone or just do this or just Google it or whatever. It, It just destroys stories. Because, first of all, yes, people might do that, but uh, it's probably going to get them killed trying to, to oh, we're going to stop and Google it, and here's all this information, and this information, and this information. Like, it stops people from taking action, and, and setting it back in that time just makes way more sense. And they do a great job with the look uh, as far as all the cars, the small town, uh, the way they dress, the haircuts, all that stuff. But it does not, uh, it still just has that, I'll, I'll take a positive and then there's like a little bit of a negative on it. To me, it still has that over-polished, over-slick, uh, modern look to it. So it's almost like a slick, modern look laid over this old school vibe and that is kind of a issue you know and I kind of wanted to look it up because I have an idea here let's see what was I'm trying to see what this was shot on and uh let's see all right so Panavision cameras is all that it says that it was shot with it doesn't specify but there is like a digital image transferring uh guy on set and it talks about the digital uh the dit transfers so to me it it might have been shot digital that tells me it might have been shot digital it could have been shot with film it doesn't have the as big of a filmic look and the reason i think it matters in this is you're really going for that 70s aesthetic and I think it misses just a little bit there because it looks so slick, so clean, so polished. It has that um, slick look. This this is where, like, uh, if you think of, like, Ty West, where I believe he went back with, like, 16 millimeter and shot House of the Devil. I'm not saying they needed to shoot with 16 millimeter, but it would have been cool. It would have like gave just like gave you that aesthetic big time there. And uh, I think that would have been cool. So to me, it just looks like they have all this stuff, right? And I love it. And then it's just, it's got this slick contemporary polish over the top of it. If that makes sense. But I, I love the vibe. We're cooking with the vibe here. And, um, I, you know, the characters are good. You've got Ben Mears uh, in here who is played by, I can't, is it, it might be Bill Pullman's son. You know, I've never really checked to see if that's Bill Pullman's son, Lewis Pullman. I think it is. He looks a lot like him. Um, And Father Callahan is played by uh, John Benjamin Hickey, I think is his name. And Father Callahan is actually maybe my favorite character from the book, from the movies. And then uh, the boy who is played by uh, Jordan Preston Carter, Mark Petrie. Uh, They kind of, in the book, it really kind of boils down to Ben Mears and uh, Father Callahan and Mark Petrie is, is like the, maybe the biggest characters here. And the movie does that too. Uh, I like how the movie pulls in uh, Mark Petrie, the boy, 
he's kind of like he gets to almost be the ringleader. He's tough. He's a tough kid. He loses a lot. He become he gets into a fuck it situation basically and kind of leads the charge. Uh, but that kind of also goes hand in hand with uh, some things that I don't like in that um, when it's so rushed here, they kind of just like everybody's quick to accept, oh, it's vampires, it's vampires. And maybe if you had built up uh, like the underlying creep factor of the town that they all kind of knew something was going on and ignoring it, uh, if you had built that up, with a little bit more runtime or even, I mean, dare I say two parts, uh, to this, you would have kind of maybe earned that a little, a little bit more, but it's just like all of a sudden like, yep, vampires, let's go get them. Let's go fight them. There's this scene where like, uh, father Callahan and Ben Mears and stuff, they're sitting around in a room and it's like, yep, vampires, uh, let's go get them. I feel like it would probably taken people a little bit longer to come to the uh, realization, it, hey, vampires. But um, for the sake of the movie, I mean, I guess it's okay. It really does have an old school vampire feel to it. And there is a lot of things to love here. They do a lot of stuff practically, a lot of stuff in camera. I was a worry. Of course, I have talked about many times on this channel that uh, this scene is one of the, the the scene in this movie where the little vampire boy floats up to the window and his eyes are glowing and all that kind of stuff is something that gave me nightmares forever. So, of course, I had my antenna up to see how they did that scene. And holy hell, they kick ass on this scene. It is absolutely everything you want from this scene and more. They're not using a bunch of CGI to float the boy in or anything else. It's done practically. You can tell it's probably wires and stuff they took out. Sure, I don't care. It is done in a more practical way, and I love it. Uh, and that gets me, too, to the way the vampires look in this. We're not, we're, we don't have a bunch of damn CGI overtaking everything. We have a lot of practical stuff, lots of old school pale skin, glowing eyes, fingernails, all that kind of stuff. I absolutely love the way the vampires look, the way they kept that feel from the original. It's fucking old school, man. And I love it. Um, and I, I, I love the fact that there, I said this about the movie Dead and Buried. This actually leans to me a little bit more towards Dead and Buried, the feel of it and the way the town is kind of like okay with stuff and kind of accepting because it's almost like they all know vampire shit's going down and they just kind of accepted that vampire stuff is going down and, uh, you know, it, it happens here in Salem's Lot. That's kind of the way it is in Dead and Buried, but uh, except for it's not vampires. Dead and Buried, I often say, has more fog than the fog. This movie has more fog than the fog. The whole town is feel, filled with fog. It's nighttime. You've got this just like, there's a lot of like old gothic, like framing, like up shots towards the sky where it's fogged out and you have moonlight and there are these like, like tree branches and buildings and figures that are silhouetted against the sky man it, it gives me those old gothic like in old school horror vibes absolutely love it and then you see like these eyes glow out of the darkness i mean there's so much there's like a scene where uh the little boy i can't remember the one boy's name early on in the movie but he goes outside and there are like all these slow push-ins on stuff uh and the boy is just like, it's like he's standing, he might as well be on the moon. He's in another world. All this fog is around him. Like little things are creaking, like the uh, seesaw going up and down. And you're just waiting, waiting, waiting. All this tension's building. And then, whoop, you know, something happens. And all this fog and atmosphere, man, there's a lot to dine out on right there. Like if you're a horror fan and you're like an old Gothic horror fan, you're a, old, you're a fan of old like 70s, 80s horror movies, there is definitely owed to a lot of that stuff that's in there. They do a good job of 
like not just putting uh, the head vampire in your face real quick into the movie. They keep him mysterious. They build him up. You get little flashes. You get little scenes. Now, they're going to pay it off. You're going to see him a lot at the end. You probably see him more than you do in the original. Uh, but uh, they kind of keep true to that original design. And, I mean, they're just from from like an old school vampire hunting gothic hammer vampire you know old school vampire stuff you got everything you want it's like the holy water and the stakes through the heart and the crosses where you have to have faith and that cross illuminates and it burns the vampire and all that kind of stuff very like old school vampire old school horror old school hammer horror tons of atmosphere and then they do tweak some things. They kind of break away from the book. And the the way they do it, though, I kind of they kind of sucker me in with it because it involves uh, like movie theater or in this case, a drive in. So you have like this movie aesthetic that they didn't have before. So they pull that in. So like I said, this movie checks a shit ton of boxes for me. I mean, I don't I don't find a lot to complain about. Yes, it's rushed. Uh, yes, they could build the story a little bit more and they could build the tension even more and and you could discover things in a better way to where, I mean, it would probably take it from like a seven and a half to a 9.5. Like um, I, right now, I give it like a seven and a half or an eight if you're going out of 10. I don't know. Um, but it's it's like that close to taking the next level because it has a it has jump scares you want, it has atmosphere that you want. Um, it's just, I mean, it really has. It, it is. It is. I think it's got a lot of rewatchability to it. It's something that I would have loved to experience in the theater because I think all of that atmosphere, that fog, that darkness, that gothic look, the silhouetted, the night shots, especially you add that killer soundtrack with uh, the uh, awesome old school 70s Gordon Lightfoot song, uh, Sundown, Sundown, you better take care. I mean, like, it is so fitting for the movie. Like, if you could have experienced that surrounded in a theater in the darkness and had that feeling of it all the way surrounding you, I think it would have been badass. But uh, I think if we could get this on on like a 4K physical media where you get better quality than streaming, I know it says it's available in 4K. It does not look anywhere near as good. Sorry. End of story. It does not look as good. But uh, my biggest knock is I wish it was in the theater. I wish that it was um, not quite as rushed. There's maybe a couple of things that I wish they hadn't changed or that they just changed uh, for the sake of, you know, contemporary audiences to, to get those safety guardrails and check boxes. I wish they haven't, you know, just stay focused on the story. Uh, I love the, uh, acting the kid, uh, the kids in this movie are very good. Um, but, uh, the, and father Callahan is good in this. Um, he's my favorite character. If you don't know, father Callahan pops up in the dark night, I mean, the Dark Knight, the Dark Tower series of books. So uh, what you see in Salem's Lot may not be all of Father Callahan's story. And I like that they drop in this movie. He mentions that something happened to him supernatural when he was younger. So it's easier for him to believe this stuff. So that kind of helps how fast they accept vampires it's also a reference to the Dark Tower series where you get a flashback uh, to Father Callahan when he's young and he gets his first taste of supernatural stuff. So uh, super cool drop in there for any of you who are fans of the books. If you catch that, that's a nice little Easter egg that they throw in there. And it does kind of help explain why, why they are so quick to adapt vampires. Supernatural stuff. Um, but there is some jump scares. I mean, it's got a lot there. I think maybe my biggest thing is it's a little rush. I wish there was a little more time to develop stuff out. We need somewhere between the original that maybe goes a little too slow, puts too much, and this that goes a little too fast. We need somewhere right in the middle. Um, and 
that slick, over-polished, contemporary sheen over the over the seventies aesthetic. Because then it it feels like, hey, we're telling y'all this is seventies, but you can tell it's made today. I wish they'd have took that extra step there and and gone all in on making it feel seventies. But this thing is totally worth your ride, uh, your time. It is a hell of a ride. I'm going to watch it again when I am not so stressed out with computer stuff and just uh, just enjoy it again. Hopefully we get a physical media release on it. But if you guys have checked it out, let me know uh, in the comments. Let me know what you think. I, I had fun with it. Uh, to me, it's definitely got old school 70s, 80s horror vibes, gothic hammer horror vibes old school filming of horror vibes uh, with the fog and stuff silhouetted at night against a uh, uh, moonlit sky and things like that. Lots, lots of fun, tasty stuff there. Uh, The vampire designs are awesome. Uh, There's not a whole lot, whole lot to complain about here. Good soundtrack to it. Uh, Mixes in some movie uh, vibe stuff. I mean, you got the small town creepy. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I look forward to watching it again. You guys let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I don't normally do like quick reviews of movies like this, but I wanted to get this out because I did enjoy it and uh, wanted to talk about it and get out here and talk to, to you guys. I uh, also wanted to let you know we are now over 4,500 subscribers. So coming up here soon, we're going to do a when we get to 5,000 subscribers, we're going to do a 5,000 subscriber huge live stream where we talk, where we do all kinds of stuff. Uh, I'm going to have some giveaways, some stuff I've been holding on to for a long time. Uh, didn't think I'd get to 5,000 this quickly, so we're going to have some free giveaways, awesome stuff, some movies, shirts, all kinds of things. Um some of you have asked me uh, where you can send me stuff like mail wise. I always keep my uh, the address where you can mail stuff is in my description down below. Uh, it's down there with my targets list. Everything you guys know that I keep running. Uh, it's all down there as well as where you can join the channel to help support the channel. You can join as a member of my Patreon or right here on YouTube. Get your name up here in lights, all kinds of special access to other videos, things like that. It really does help me out, uh, and I really do appreciate it. But uh, you don't have to do any of that to be a part of all this. Just like, subscribe, ring that bell, spread the pop culture word. And until next time, be kind, rewind like always. This is Chase with AV Pop Culture, and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. I know.